Hello everybody, today we are going to talk about some of the complications, uh, mainly the procedure complications. I labeled it as a complication in the cath lab, but since it is a procedure where we are accessing the either the arteries or the veins, so they, it can happen with anybody who is doing a procedure, either it's in the ICU, in the emergency room, so while if you are putting a central line or arterial line, A line, triple lumen but I will mainly focus on in the cath lab where we do the left heart catheterization number one and number two is the right heart catheterization so basically what we are doing in these uh, procedure is putting IV lines into either the veins or the arteries in a cath lab you will see that they will have these different catheters and sheets which they measure with the what we call like a French, I'll just circle this. They will say six French, four French, 10 French, 18 French. So what does that mean? Basically, if you want to get an idea, the each French divided by pi, which is 3.14 equals millimeter. So basically, if you have a six French catheter, I'll just round it off from 3.14 to simply three. So it's gonna be a two millimeter catheter. So when we do TAVR in the hybrid room and, and, and for the structural, we usually put bigger sheets. They can be up to 14 to 18 French. So let's say for example, if it's a 14 French sheet, you divide it by three. So you get somewhere 4.6 millimeter of a catheter. So this is give, kind of give you a rough idea of how big of a catheter that we are going to be putting in the arteries and the veins. And the bigger the catheter, the more chances of complication. So with that, we come to this picture one or picture, I'll label it as picture A, where you are accessing the, the femoral artery for the left heart catheterization. Picture B is left heart catheterization through the radial artery. So for the most part in the cath lab, about 90 to 95% of the cases that we do are radial access. And as you all know, it is more safer, it's easy on the patient, less chances of bleeding and complication, but there's still there are a number of patients where you have to go through the, the, the femoral access to complete the, uh, the procedure. So let's start with figure A. So I have here, and with this arrow is your femoral head in relation to the femoral artery. This is your common femoral artery. I'll just mark this. And this is where you want to get the access into the common femoral artery. The reason for that is it is an artery just that just lies on top of the femoral head so that if you have to press to achieve hemostasis, you can do that. And number two, it is big enough to kind of accommodate a bigger sheet. So when we are trying to get access for into the into the common femoral artery, we use a fluoro. We can put like a hemostat here. We fluoro it, and basically what we are looking at is this femoral head. And what you want to do is to access the femoral artery in the middle of the femoral head and that's going to be your perfect stick and as i said for the obvious reason if once you are done with the procedure you can press the artery against this femoral head to achieve the hemostasis so there are two things that can happen it can be an up uh, what we call like a high stick or it can be a low stick. So it can be a high stick. And number two is your low stick. And both of them are a problem. And I get, I'll get to it why it is. So let's come back to the fig, picture A or figure A here. I want you to look at this, what we call like an epigastric artery. So this is your epigastric artery. So if you stick the common femoral artery above the epigastric artery 
this is called a high stick and it can be a problem and this is because the common femoral artery is a retroperitoneal structure here so if you access the artery right here and once you are done with the procedure you take out the sheath and you try to achieve hemostasis if you put pressure here you don't have any bony structure to kind of collapse the artery so it's going to keep oozing blood and a potential life-threatening situation or a complication that we label as rp bleed or the retroperitoneal bleed it is very important to to diagnose this and to suspect for it especially if you have a somebody who had a difficult access so it's very important when we are in the cardiac catheterization lab that you know we give a sign out okay was it a difficult access how was the access it was high or low because that can help uh, the, pa the people who are taking care of the patient upstairs in the cvicu or wherever the patient is going what happens with the rp bleed is there is uh, slow bleeding into the rp or retroperitoneal space you might it might not be obvious as as somebody who has a hematoma so it is as i said is is invisible bleed so you cannot see that and by the time you realize or you suspect it or the patient start having symptoms and the symptoms will be back pain or they will become hypotensive tachycardic and potentially go into shock so it's very important to kind of uh, you know suspect this diagnose it earlier before the patient goes into that full-blown as i said and becomes anemic shock requiring transfusion and things like that and the easiest way you can do that is sending the patient to for the cat scan and if the patient has a ct scan that shows an active oozing of the blood then you know you might ask uh, the interventional colleagues to kind of deal with it or the ct or the surgeons to kind of repair that but it, as i said again it is very very important to kind of recognize this earlier some of the other complications that can happen in the femoral arterial access is uh, if you have a low stick so there are two arteries the common femoral artery divides into sfa superficial femoral artery and another artery is the profunda femoris artery so the profunda femoris is called the left main of the leg we don't really hear about it but it's a very important artery it goes and supplies the femoral head all the structures around the hip bone so that's why as you have the left main in the heart the profunda femoral artery is known as the left main for the leg so if you have a low stick what can happen is most commonly we see uh, what we call like a pseudo aneurysm in a pseudo aneurysm there is a puncture artery and the blood is just contained with a small adventitial layer and it can potentially rupture and 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 there can be a big hematoma if it is a small pseudo aneurysm uh, you know it can be easily taken care of just with the compressing with an ultrasound or the uh, the vascular surgery or the interventional colleague can inject what we call like a thrombin into the neck of that pseudo aneurysm another complication is basically if you have a low stick and then if the patient end up getting a closing device and some of the closing device that we use are called angio seal the angio seal has a foot plate that goes inside the artery lumen and it is dissolve dissolvable over the period of weeks but if you imagine if you put a small uh, in a small artery like in a superficial femoral artery you put that foot plate it can totally obstruct the artery or it can clip the other artery or, or the profunda and same goes true with the profunda axis as well and of of course as i said you have these if you see this here the bifurcation is below the femoral head obviously again if you have to achieve hemostasis and you're pressing it manually you might not able to achieve hemostasis since there is no bony structure behind that another potential complication that can happen is if you put the needle and that goes through the vein 
the femoral vein which is medial to the artery and then into the artery and one by the time you are done with the procedure the patient comes back you start to hear the bruit and the thrill and may, maybe a hematoma so that could be another potential complication what we call like a arterial arterial venous fistula rest you all know it can be bleeding it can be an infection and, and and some other things a nerve injury i won't go into detail i'm just going to stick to the pertinent that you need to know let's come to the picture b here the the radial cat that we do there are two arteries that you can access either it's the radial artery or the ulnar artery you might not see us accessing the ulnar artery that frequently and the reason for that is it is a deeper structure and it's hard to kind of put a tr pen or a compression compressing device on it to achieve hemostasis so basically most of the time we do radial and of course if you have somebody who is whose radial is not good you will not try to go to the ulnar because it can potentially jeopardize the circulation of the hand and the reason we do the radial is we know even if the radial artery gets thrombosed you have this um, superficial palmar arch and you have a deeper deep palmar arch which kind of shunts the blood in both direction so even if you have a thrombosis of the radial artery most of the time it's not a clinic you know of clinical significance and to give you an example most of the surgeon the cardiothoracic surgeon they sometimes use the radial artery to kind of use as a conduit for the bypass surgeries one other potential complication that can happen in the radial artery is what we call and is very important to kind of recognize this is the compartment syndrome if there is a bleeding big bleeding into the to the the forearm as it it is a very you know um compact space wrapped around with the fascia you can have compartment syndrome and it is very important to recognize that with that we come to picture of the procedure 2 which is right heart catheterization um ultrasound guided is the basic and required technique we we don't do any more of the blind sticks ultrasound guidance is the is the way to go basically you want to make sure that you are going into the artery not into the artery sorry you are basically you are trying to make sure that you don't go into the artery and you are going into the vein by compressing it and then more preferably using a micropuncture you use use a micropuncture needle then you put a wire in and when you put the wire in i'll just draw it here you need to see how far the wire goes if the wire goes straight then you are in the vein but if you put a wire in and it kind of goes along like this like as if the arch of the of the the aorta or it goes like this and just curls here in the top portion of the chest that means that you are hitting the aortic valve so it's very important when you put the wire in the micropuncture wire to put it kind of you can even let it go all the way to the ivc just to be sure that okay you are in the venous system a complication that can happen in these patients obviously as i said you can have bleeding you can have hematoma which can be potentially devastating because of it close proximity to the airways the airway can get compromised and another complication that i want you all to kind of understand is in this case also what we call as a low stick we usually don't talk about it but it is very important if you are accessing the vein try to access it in the middle of the neck so you want to make sure that you are in the middle of the neck because if you have a low stick um in patients who are obese and have a short neck you have this pleura here so going down here and if your needle is directed down sometimes what you can do is what we call like a pneumothorax or hemothorax that is something that you have to kind of keep in mind when you're doing this procedure but i think for the most part when we do ultrasound it guided it is a safe procedure thank you very much